Hey guys and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video here we're going to talk about like how we can get the live FPS count in OpenCV. So when we're running our programs and our algorithms on, on our like image and our video sequence that we're loading in from our camera in OpenCV, then we want to see like how many FPS do we actually like have and how many how many times a second, like how many frames per second do we actually like do operations on and it really depends on what different kind of algorithms and methods that you're using and, and it also depends on your camera and computer and hardware. So in this video here, we're going to see in, in both in Python and in C++ like how we can calculate the live is, a, a FPS uh, while we're running some different kind of methods in OpenCV, and then we're going to display that in in uh, on the image so we can see like how many frames per seconds uh, do we get in our image with this camera and this setup here in hardware. But first of all, here uh, remember to to subscribe to this channel here, and also I'll link the Discord server down in the description here. So make sure to check that out if you want to join a community where we're talking about some different kind of things without uh, within computer vision and artificial intelligence, deep learning, and, and neural networks and stuff like that. And also, if you have some projects where you have some problems, you can go ask some questions in there and see if, if people can answer. And also, if you have some different kind of like, if you just want some inspiration for projects that you can do, uh, make sure to join that dis Discord server. It, the link is down in the description. So we're not going to use a blind text here, and I'm going to show you like how we can actually like um, calculate and how we can get the, the number of frames per seconds that we get uh, when we're running different kind of methods and when we are opening up a, a camera and seeing the video sequence um, in the frame. So first of all, here we're going to import OpenCV, which we're going to use, and also NumPy, and then we're going to use this um, time uh, time uh, module here as well, so we can actually like get the time for each frame, and then we can calculate like how, how much time that, that did it take to actually like do operations on this frame here, and then we'll get it in a new frame and calculate the difference between the start time and the end time, and then we know like uh, how many frames do we actually have per second when we're running our program in in OpenCV here uh, with Python in this example here. I'm going to show it in C++ um, as well, and then in in the next video and in one of the upcoming videos in this OpenCV tutorial and computer vision tutorial here, I'm actually going to do a comparison of OpenCV and C++ in actual code here where we're going to see like the FPS count, like is there any difference between using Python and OpenCV if you're only using the functions that we're calling from OpenCV, and then we're also going to see like how much does it affect by writing uh, code in Python compared to C++ when we're doing for example for loops in Python versus C++ and how that impacts and affects the number of FPS that we get uh, when we're running these different kind of methods here in OpenCV. So I'm really excited to show you the result of those tests to see like what is the difference between OpenCV and in C++ or in Python and how it affects by writing your own code in both those two programming languages. So it's really exciting result that we get. Uh, so make sure to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell notification so you know when I upload that video about uh, the test in OpenCV here in this computer vision tutorial. But first of all here, in this example here, I'm just going to use the method that we used in one of the previous videos where we're going to use this uh, background subtraction algorithm here where we're going to use the, the k nearest neighbor. And then we're going to start the camera from where, we, where we're actually like going to see like the number of frames that we can do operations on or per second. And then we get the FPS here for the video or like from the camera that we, that we load in. So in this case here, we call this function here or like this macro here, which is ZV uh, cap prop uh, FPS. So we get the FPS of the camera that we're actually like operating with and which, which we connect with this uh, video capture function up here. Then we're just going to print out the, the frames per second that we have for uh, from our camera. And then we need to specify the number of frames here that where we want to do the calculations for. So in this example here, uh, we want to do the calculations for each frame. So we want to capture the time uh, from loading in the frame to actually like finishing and showing the frame uh, and when we're, when we're doing all the operations in between those so we can find the difference in that time that we're going to calculate and then we know like how many frames they do actually like do this uh, time uh, time calculation for and then we can calculate that the, the, the number of frames per second that we actually like get when we're running with this video capture here and a camera with this background subtraction algorithm here. So first of all here, we're just going to again print out like the number of frames that we're, that we're capturing um, at the moment here. And then down here in our while loop, we're actually like going to, to grab the frames here in the while loop that we load in from the camera. Then first of all, we need to, to have this start time here. So we start the time here in the, in, in, in the, fir in, in the first example here in the, in the while loop uh, before we're actually like going to, to read in the frame from our video sequence with this um, video.read function here. So now our frame from the camera is stored in this frame uh, variable here. And first of all, we just check if, if that frame is, is none or it's, if it's empty, then we just print out that we have no frame and we'll break up this while over here and, and the program will terminate. Or else we will call this FD mask here, which we set equal to the backs up, uh, back, uh, like 
subtraction here. So we subtract the background from this frame here by using this algorithm that we defined up here with the K nearest neighbors. So then we have actually like a done um, background subtraction on our mask here. And then down here, we actually like have this ball up here that we can run through and test some different kind of examples. So I'm going to use this here for a comparison test of OpenCV in C++ and, and, and Python uh, later on. So we're going to use that for, for that video, but in this case here, I just wanted to show you like how we can actually like calculate the number of frames per second that we get when, we, when we're running different kind of algorithms in OpenCV. So, and then we're going to use this kernel here where we're going to do opening on our, our not image just to do some different kind of operations and some pre-processing or like post-processing of our image and doing some other different kind of um, methods instead of we just to like have uh, the number of frames that we that we actually have. So we're going to do some operations on and see how how that affects the number of frames that we get per per second. So after we've done all our operations on the frame that we want to, then we actually like have this end dot time uh, time dot time here. So we actually like end we have the end time here, and then the seconds that the time has elapsed for doing this calculation here on this frame, like this is a single frame that we load in do operations on and then we calculate the time uh, it took for do, doing that or those operations on that image or frame. So it, the seconds here that it took took is just like the end time here minus the start time. And then down here we can calculate the actual uh, frames per second which is the number of frames. In this case we only have one frame. And then we divide that uh, by the seconds up here that we calculated by this time here. So when we're going to do a comparison in, in, uh, in C++ uh, versus like um, versus Python, we're actually going to have a number of frames and then we're going to take the average of, of a number of frames and then calculate the average number, uh, like the average uh, frames per second that we get by running different kind of algorithms and different kind of like uh, code blocks in OpenCV and uh, in Python and C++. And then when we have calculated uh, the frames per second here, we're actually just, we're just going to show it in the output frame here, which is the foreground mask. And then we're going to, to show the foreground mask here as well. And then at the end here of the program, we just check if we hit the Q or the escape button here, then we'll just break off this uh, while loop here and we will terminate the program and release uh, the camera down here, which is with your dot release function here. So if I run the program here, we will now get the live FPS count when we run this program here for each of the frames that we're, that we're like um, taking in from our camera. So let's now run the program here to see like what's going on and we can actually like get um, the live FPS count here. So in this case here we can see that we have like around 120 frames per second when we're running uh, with this camera here and on this uh, on this hardware setup here. So I have a kind of good CPU. Uh, so when we're not doing heavy calculations and like heavy operations on our image frame, then we actually like get a high number of FPS here and we calculate this FPS here for each of the frames here. So they, they won't really be exact, but this is the live uh, frames per second count. So when we're going to do some different kind of test and comparison, then we're actually like going to take a number of frames and then we're going to take the average of those to get a more accurate uh, result of like how our algorithms is performing in C++ and Python. But we can see now that we're doing background subtraction and we're doing some post processing of the image here. Um, so we can see that the FPS here is, is, is fairly high. But we can actually go in here and then increase um, the number of, of follow-up here, that, like the number of times that we're running these follow-ups here uh, through. So this will take more time to do the actual operation on. And the more we, we like the more complexity we have in the algorithms and uh, and in our like methods that we're calling on our frame, or like in between the time here that we're actually like calculating the time from uh, for the frame, then we will actually like get less and less FPS. So the more operation we do on an image. The less, uh, the less frame per second that we get. So if we're doing some different kind of like optic detection and stuff like that, then it might uh, make sense to go in here and see like how many frames per second do we actually like get when we're running the, uh, that algorithm. So in this case here, we're just like uh, increasing n here to um, to thousand here. So we'll get this n n squared time complexity. So we, the time will be really bad for this example here when we're running this fold up here. So if I run the program here again, we can see that. Uh, we will now get less FPS here in this example here and we can see that the camera here is starts lacking so we only have like around 9 FPS when we are running these different kind of operations here so we're both running a background subtraction we're doing some post-processing of the image and then we're running uh, an n squared uh, algorithm which is in this case here it's just a full loop that we run through uh, these uh, these thousand times here in the end so first of all we're running through um, thousand times here and then thousand times in the in the outer loop as well here so that's, that will be uh, n squared time complexity. And we can see now we only get around like eight, seven, eight, nine FPS here, and it's really lacking around here. So if this was an algorithm inside of our project, we might need to optimize this a bit if, if we needed this real time like application 
or like some different kind of operations or detection or methods in real time, then this will probably not be uh, be good enough for these algorithms here. So we're not jumping into Visual Studio here and I'm going to show you like how we can do the same thing as we just did in Python in C++. So it's kind of the same and the calculation is the same, but we're going to do some other different kind of like timing so we can get the actual time in C++ um, instead. But the method and like the idea behind it and like the procedure is, is kind of the same. Um, and then we can later on in, a, in the next video, then we can compare like how C++ uh, and Python, um, like how they operate and how they affect each other when we're calling different kind of methods in OpenCV. And also like how we can use different kind of like our own code uh, or like own algorithms on the frames on the frames as well and how they will affect the frames per second. So first of all here we need to include this time library up here in, uh, in OpenCV or like in C++ here to actually like get the timing, uh, to get the timing. And then we just create this background subtraction here again, as we did in Python. So we're running this uh, as KNN, which is the K-Nearest Neighbor algorithm as background subtraction. Then we'll load in the video here from the default camera on the computer here. And then the, the, the frames per second for the camera we load in as the same way where we just call this video.get here. And then the cap prop uh, FPS here. So we get the number of frames per second for the camera. And then we just define this variable here, the number of frames that we're going to do the calculations for. So this is the exact same thing as we did um, in Python. And then we're going to have a clock T variable here with, with the start time. And we also have the clock T variable here uh, for the end time. So we're going to store the time that it takes for doing the operations in, 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 in this variable here. And we can also do it with some other different kind of like from the journal library. But in this case here, we're just going to use time t where we have this clock t and clock t, uh, like clock t start and clock t end. And then we're going to take the difference between that and do the same calculations as we did in Python. And then we're going to store it in this milliseconds here and if, and the live FPS count that we, that we actually have. So then we will also have this uh, while loop here as we had in, in Python. And then we're going to start the, the time or like the clock in, uh, with this function here. So we have this variable here start that we set equal to the clock. And then we do the same kind of thing as we did in Python where we, first of all, we, we, we load in the frame that we're going to do the operations on. Then we're going to apply the background subtraction on that frame and store it in this FD mask variable here. We're going to do some uh, post-processing of the image here with opening. And then we have this for loop down here running as well, where we have these uh, with this um, n, n squared time complexity, this algorithm here running. And then to end the time here that we're going to like uh, calculate like how, how, how much time did it take to run th this operations here, or like these operations here on the image. Then we're going to call the function here, clock again, and we will store that time in the end variable here. Then we can go down here and actually like get the, this number of seconds that it took to do these operations here on the image. So that will be the end minus the start. And then we divide that by the clocks it took per second in this, uh, which is uh, like a macro or like uh, a defined uh, like the defined macro we have here in this time.h library. And then we can actually like see out the, the time it actually took. So this will be in milliseconds in this case here. Um, so it will print out the milliseconds here or like the seconds here that it took uh, for like actually like doing these operations here on the image. And then we can calculate the live FPS countdown here where we just take the number of frames and divide that by the seconds that it took or like the milliseconds that it took to actually like do the operations on the frame. And then we can output here to the terminal the estimated frames per second. So this will be an estimate for each of the frames that we're running through. And in the next tutorial, as, I, as I've already said that we did in Python, and in the, in the next tutorial where we're going to do a comparison, we're going to take an average of a number of frames to actually like get a more precise uh, idea of the number of frames that we get by running our algorithms or methods on, uh, on our frames. And then we're just going to put output the text here on the on like the image that we're going to show as well. So we're going to output the live FPS count on our image, and then we're going to show the image. And then at the end here, if we press the Q or the escape, we will uh, break off the while up here and we'll terminate the program and, and release our video. So let's now run the program here and see like how we can get the live FPS count here in, uh, in OpenCV in C++. So we will open up the program here and it will show the frame here in a second. So we can see here now that we get the number of frames per second that we have by running this algorithm here or like these different kind of methods on the frames here. And we can see that we get around like uh, 35 to 40 frames per second when we're running these operations here. And we can see that uh, it, it, it is fairly smooth and we're running this uh, n squared um, algorithm here together with these two follow here together with the different other different kind of operations that we're calling from the OpenCV library. So this can be used for a lot of different kind of things and like for timing and seeing like how good performance do your algorithm have and if you need to optimize it for your applications and stuff like that or you can actually like have more complex algorithms running on your frame because 
it, it doesn't take up enough frames or you just want more a complex more complex model or more accurate model then you can actually like use these fpss to see like if if you're allowed to make more complex um up, uh, algorithms or you actually like have to reduce it and have to make like a more general solution um and stuff like that so that's it for the video here guys remember to subscribe button under the video here and also the bell notification so you get a notification when i upload the next videos and the upcoming videos in the future and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future because it just really helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way and i just really appreciate your support i'm also currently doing a deep learning tutorial on neural networks where we're talking about the convolution of neural networks right now and then later on we're going to combine convolution neural networks with computer vision and see like how those two uh, play together but right now we're just creating convolution neural networks uh, training the convolution neural, neural, neural networks and then doing predictions on data that they haven't seen before so i'll link to the tutorial up here if you're interested in it or else i'll just see you in the next video guys bye for now